Hi! On the woodpecker today, I spent 10 days at the cottage and I managed to install my second solar panel this year. If you have seen my last episode at the cottage, you saw me installing a new solar panel and getting the old one down. This one was rendered useless because of the new one. During our last day, we installed another 340 watt solar panel. And just like the other one, I started making sure I would have a good support to hold it in place. I begin by modifying the one we brought down. This time around, I drilled the mounting holes at home. I also drilled the holes for the bottom support. One month later, I'm able to bolt it all together at the cottage. To connect this new panel to the existing wires, <laughs> I need to extend them. We're almost ready. But first, we need to move the winch from one side of the tower to the other one. Now it's as easy as climbing the tower. Up. Then René winches the new solar panel up. I guide it into position. Then it's just a matter of bolting it in place. <laughs> when I showed this part to René, she really had a smile on her face. Because in reality, this wasn't that easy. I spent five hours on top of the tower. But at least when I hooked up the wires, I was finally able to get down. <laughs> yes, one of our mishaps was that I broke the wire of the anemometer. Enjoy these pictures because you won't see them anymore. As you can see, I made my anemometer with pieces of brass that I solder with lead. I used a small motor as a pivot and those magnets activate a reed switch. All this is held in place with plumbing pipes. Now that it's fixed, we just need to put it up. Then bolt it back in place. I must admit that I have the utmost respect for those of you who are making a living out of working in the air like that. Let's say that I'm not at my best tied up at 60 feet in the air. But the reward is that now I have an anemometer working again. To answer several requests, I will now take the time to talk about my setup. Nearly 20 years ago, I erected this 62 feet tall tower to put a small windmill on it. This wasn't my brightest idea. I don't suggest you do the same thing. 99% of the time, it's like that. But when there's some wind, I should say a windstorm, it works super well. As a matter of fact, one time it worked so well that this is what's left of my $500 battery. Yes, it really exploded by itself just like that. But from this came something good because of the windmill. I've installed some guy wires. They are held in place with big concrete blocks that I've poured. Because of this, I now have a nice place to bolt solar panels over the top of the trees. I wouldn't have been able to install them without the installation of the windmill. But today, I'm super happy because I have a nice place for all my panels. Those are the last two I've installed. They're facing west. This is a makeshift representation of how the sun hits my panels. All this energy is stored in this big battery. This is my primary charger. <laughs> yes, primary, because for everything else around here, I have a B plan. 
In fact, this is my first charger. I didn't like the fact that it doesn't allow me to have a readout on it. To switch from one charger to the other, I made these three poles switch. In this position, it's the top charger that is working. If I switch back, it's the other one. At the right of the charger, I have my old control panel. I like it, because it looks like an old nuclear plant from the 80s. But uh, I can see the values from inside the cottage. So I built this one with a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino. But uh, I'm not even finished, I'm making a brand new one. This one only has a Raspberry Pi. I replaced the Arduino with those analog to digital converters, because mm, they're more accurate. From now on, I'm going to use those current sensors to monitor all my system. But even with the one in place, I can monitor the values of everything from inside the cottage. I love it. It's super useful. I also have two inverters for my AC current needs. We can see both of them here. I only use the top one because it's the only one creating a true sine wave. I start the AC current with this remote and the receiver there. This is quite useful. But for this, the battery has to be well charged. If it's not the case, I have this small generator. This box automatically switches the power from the inverter to the generator with a relay inside. Now it's time to look at how it's hooked up. First of all, it's important to know how much voltage the charger can handle. As you can see, my chargers can't handle more than 92 volts. If you add up all the voltages from my solar panels, <laughs> it's quite obvious that this is way more than that. Generally, the solar panel salesman will suggest this kind of wiring. This is a good setup. If your panels don't exceed the charger limit because there's only one wire coming down from the solar panels. But mm, I have way more voltage than the charger limit. So this is how I install them. I have a set of wires coming down from each solar panel. They're isolated by a power diode at their end. This allows me to be able to read the voltage and current of each one just like you can see here in the morning. All three panels are charging the battery, but not a lot from the big panels. In the afternoon, the small one is doing nothing, but the big ones are charging the battery at 18 amperes. And this is with my laptop hooked up to the system. If I turn off the inverter, look how much current the battery is getting charged. The Raspberry Pi also stores all the data in the database. This way, I can monitor my system in the long term. I can also take a closer look to study it more closely. This was a closer look to my solar system at the cottage. I hope this information will help you if one day you want to do something similar. And we will see each other soon on The Woodpecker.